Okay, now let's go back to Revelations 11. Thank you. The water. Let's go back to Revelations 11 and see if we could, you know, just do an, a quick overview on the two verses we've just uh, uh, read. And I hope you all have get, gotten understanding up until this point. Read. Revelations chapter 11, verse 1. Go ahead. And there was given me a rod, oh, excuse me, a reed. reed like unto a rod. There, there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. Rise and measure the temple of God. We know 1 Corinthians 3.16 lets like, you know the temple of God's people. So that's Israel, the children of Israel, through the seed of Abraham. Read. And the altar. And the altar. And them that worship therein. And them that worship therein. You understand? So these are the people that actually worship the true God of the Hebrews. Now, if you ask the modern day Christian, do you worship the God of the Hebrews today? They'll look at you like you're crazy. The God of who we worship, Jesus. Well, don't you know that Christ himself prayed to the God of the Hebrews? To let you know that the Gentiles are dealing with another God. The Jewish people today, they are not dealing with the God of the Hebrews. You know, and I have things on record. Straight from the Zion and straight from their agenda. They're not telling you, but their God, the Jewish people over in Israel today, God is Lucifer. You talk to the modern day citizens in Israel and it'll shock you how, how much they don't even believe in, in what these guys, they don't believe in anything. They just over there. It's America over there in Israel. That's all. They just dealing with partying. They're dealing with prostitution. They're dealing with all types of evils. They'll make you think that they're over there being holy. Let me tell you, these people don't believe nothing. They don't believe in Messiah coming. they just over there having a European time. That's it. Just, just trying to be a buffer and trying to be there as a guard to stop us from coming into our own land. That's the only reason they're over there. To try to, to, try to thwart prophecy. To try to stop us. Listen to this clearly. Read. Verse 2. Go ahead. But the court which is without. But the court which is without. Of the temple. Without the temple. That means even in the Old Testament, the Gentiles, even the Gentiles that came out of, out of Egypt that was amongst us, they couldn't go into the temple. They had to stay in the outer courts which were for the Gentiles. Now these Gentiles were following the God of the Hebrews, but they couldn't go in the temple. They can only be in the outer courts. It's the same as the Gentiles today. If they renounce their gods, yes, they can be partakers because they're following the true doctrine. But they're not to be service in the temple or they cannot be counted as the number. Because the angels are only numbering 12,000 of each, of each of those tribes we mentioned prior. Read. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. Leave it out. And measure it not. Don't measure that. He told the angels, don't measure that. Why? For it is given unto the Gentiles. It is given to the Gentiles. So don't measure the Gentiles in this. Because this temple, this kingdom that's coming, is an Israelite kingdom. <clears throat> Revelation, the 21st chapter, tell you that the name on the kingdom was a name of, a, of the children of Israel. Each gate will be Judah, Benjamin, Levi. That means the gates into the temple will be our people. They're the owners of the house. That's why Paul says that if you be a wild olive tree, uh, uh, a wild olive tree uh, uh, grafted in, be not high minded, but fit. For if the most high spirit not his own people, take heed lest he also not spare thee. To let you know, Gentiles, you have broke the covenant that was given to you through Paul. Because Paul made it clear that you, you, you stand by faith. But you Gentiles were not supposed to boast against the natural branches. You were not supposed to stand up in the last day and claim that you were the people. You were not supposed to hide the true identity of the people 
you took down. You were supposed to treat these people as if they were the children of God instead of using them. So you went against what the Benjamite Paul told you. And he was talking to the Gentiles in the spirit of Christ. He says, you Gentiles, don't think that, the, that, that, that we're doing this so that, you, so that you can be saved. He said it straight off. I'm doing this so that, so that by jealousy, we may provoke some of our people back into this. And you stand by faith. Yes, you can come, but understand where you stand. Because if you start going against these same people who have actually preached the gospel to you and preached Christ to you and say that they were cut off so that you can be grafted in. If you start saying that God's people are done away with and now you are the people, that's what Paul warned you from. He says, listen, if you do that, you'll be boasting against the natural branches. That's Romans 11. So take heed that if the Most High put his people under you and he did this to his beloved, what do you think he's going to do to you Gentiles? What do you think going to come down on you if he did this to his own people, which he gave the Lord Mount Sinai? So you Gentiles, you are in trouble. You are in dire trouble, especially those that are over the Christian doctrine today, because you're doing exactly what Paul warned you from. Of course, we have Gentiles all through the gathering of Christ church. They learn. They learn from the gathering of Christ church, but they know the truth. They follow the God of the Hebrews and they do not boast against the natural branches. The same as Cornelius. He didn't boast against the natural branches. So we're not secluding or going against anyone. But you notice that it's okay for us to talk about the ills and what our people did and go against them and be harsh on them. But people feel a certain type of way when we show that the Gentiles also have stipulation. So don't, don't expect us to just talk about our people and not tell the Gentiles what's coming to them. I just wanted to put that out there. Because they boasted. I'm talking about those who claim they believe in Christ. They told us when we found out who we were that it doesn't matter. Don't you know that that's what Paul warned you from? He told you, don't, don't ever make that statement, it doesn't matter. He told you. Because he said the boast is that you would say that they were cut off, that you would be drafted in, grafted in. That was the boast. Let's read, read, read that again. Uh, Revelations chapter 11, verse 2. Go ahead. But the court which is without, the temple leave out. Leave out. And measure it not. He told the angels, don't measure the Gentiles. Read. For it is given unto the Gentiles. It is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall be tread underfoot forty and two months. Forty two months is one thousand two hundred and sixty days. You have to understand this to know who the two witnesses are. Keep that in your mind. One thousand two hundred and three score days. A score is twenty. Three score is sixty. One thousand two hundred and sixty days. Read it again. Uh, verse two. But the court which is without the temple leave out. Leave out. And measure it not. Don't measure it. For it is given unto the Gentiles. The Gentiles. And the holy city shall be tread underfoot. And the holy city shall be tread underfoot. Forty and two months. Forty two months is one thousand two hundred and three score days. So now we must start from when the holy city was treading underfoot. When did that happen? Hold that in Revelations 21 and 20. Revelations chapter 21, verse 20. Of uh, the fifth Sardinus. No, let, let's get it. No, not Revelations. Excuse me. Not Revelations. Luke 21 and 20. Luke 21 and 20. Uh, St. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. When was it treading down of the Gentiles? Because that's the beginning of what we call the 1,203 score days. Read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Start at the 19th verse. Uh, verse 19. And, and your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. When you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Know that the desolation is near. Then let them which are in Judea 
flee to the mountains. And those that are in Israel flee where? To the mountains. Flee to the mountains. We went into the Atlas Mountains around Morocco into Africa. This is prophecy. So those who took heed was trodden down by the Gentiles and were scattered, beginning a scattering throughout the four corners. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let them which are in the midst, which are in Jerusalem, leave. So those that, are, that were in Christ, that, that's a part of this temple, understood not to stay in Jerusalem. Because the Gentiles were looking to destroy it and inhabit the Holy Land. Proving that the Gentiles are in the land today. Read. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Go ahead. For these be the, the days of vengeance. These be the days of vengeance. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Woe to them that are with child and give suck in those days. Why? It was hard traveling in the winter time while the Romans were killing and destroying us. It was tough, let alone trying to feed a child and run with the child. That's what was happening during the time of 70 AD. And also... It's talking about future tense in the last destruction when they come against us all at once. Well, not only the Romans, but the whole Roman rule over the earth. This is about to be worldwide now because now it's not just the Romans. The Roman agenda, don't forget, the church or what you would call the corporation called the Club of Rome are the elites over the world. So they're not finished this. But, they, but that, this is the microcosm of their plan worldwide. Read. For there shall be great distress in the land. Go ahead. And wrath upon this people. And wrath upon this people. What people? The children of Israel. The physical people who were destroyed by the Romans. Go ahead. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Our people fell by the edge of the sword. We went against our God. In the old covenant, Christ came to shed his blood, and now we must go through the prophecies until we until the prophecies are fulfilled and we are established again as a people. Read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Shall be what? And shall be led away captive into all nations. That's one clue to know who the children of Israel are today. First of all, they are those that went into captivity or slavery. Now, when you look in North, Central, South America, you see these people taken over by the Romans, the Roman Catholic Church, and was converted into a Roman religion and was made to worship a Roman, Cedric Boger, and was made to worship the Queen of England, Roman. You see this? And then when you go into Africa, same thing, but the majority of them are taken over either by the Romans or by what we would call the Arab. Catholic Church because they all wanted the same. It's just an Arabic now. The Arabs then took our people over and trod them on the foot and, and stole them into captivity and converted them to Islam. It's all the same thing. All over the earth they've done this to us. Why? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. They must fulfill their rulership in the earth before our God crushed them and raised Israel again. Read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Of the what? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Let you know that there will be Gentiles ruling Jerusalem. So the Palestinians don't belong there. Neither do the Europeans belong there. Neither does the Arabs belong there. Read. And so the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that's great because we know according to the Bible, the Most High gave them a time to fulfill in which they would not rule Jerusalem anymore. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. This is Christ giving his people a warning against the Gentiles coming to destroy them through the power of Satan. Also, we know according to this prophecy, it will come a time in which the Most High would stop their rulership in Jerusalem until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Go back to Revelations 11 and 2 now. 
Revelations chapter 11, verse 2. Read. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. Leave out. And measure it not. Don't measure it. For it is given unto the Gentiles. Because it's given unto the Gentiles, which Gentiles mean non-Israelites. Period. If you're not from one of the 12 tribes, automatically by default, according to scripture, you are a Gentile. So the Jewish people over in Israel today are not Jews or Israel. They are Jewish through conversion. They are Gentile themselves. They converted into Judaism during the time between the 8th and the 11th century. They're Khazars. They are Romans. Read. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot. And, and then once they destroy the people, who eventually went into captivity, they will tread underfoot. Now, here's the lie they're trying to say now. They, the, the new lie is that Israel went into captivity in slave ships into Rome. Let me tell you, you cannot have Caucasians taking down other Caucasians and claim that, that, is, that, that, that that's the prophecy is being fulfilled. That doesn't make any sense. If the Jews were Caucasian, how could they have been taken down by Caucasians? They could just change their uniforms or change their clothing and, and disguise themselves as Romans. We were the people who were being thrown in the arenas who didn't take heed to that prophecy to run out of Jerusalem. They were throwing us to the bears, throwing us to the lions, having us fight as gladiators in the arena. Sound familiar? Look at your arenas today. Who's fighting in this? Who predominantly fighting in, in your arenas now? And being entertainment for the Romans right now in their coliseums all over the earth. Who? We are. Same thing. Same exact thing. Yes, we were taken into captivity in Rome, but to serve as slaves. But the Bible says we'll be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So Rome is not the only place. Now, you notice the Sicilians and all those people in Rome who are black skinned. Yes, those are the remnant of the Jews that were taken captivity. Like the darker skinned Sicilians, who they know have black blood. Those were the people who were second class citizens in Rome. The same way we're second class citizens in modern day Rome, America. Read. Uh, verse 3. Go ahead. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Now, he says, I will give power unto what? My two witnesses. Unto my two witnesses. Now listen to this clearly. Some people might think that, hold up, this is talking about Elijah and Moses. It's not. When it talks about the power that will be given to his two witnesses, let me give you an example of who his two witnesses are according to Scripture. Don't forget the kingdom of Israel was split in two. The kingdom of Israel was split in two. That one, that one nation became two separate after the sin of Solomon. Let's get that. Let's go into 2 Kings and show when the kingdom was split. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, uh, verse 30. 1 Kings 11 and 30. Read. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thou shalt, uh, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, read. And will give thee ten tribes, will give ten tri tribes to thee, excuse me. And will give ten tribes to thee, read. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake. And he shall have what? One tribe for my servant David's sake. But there will be one tribe for my servant David's sake. Read. And for Jerusalem's sake. And for Jerusalem's sake. The city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Jump down to uh, verse, verse uh, 34. Go to 34, read. Uh, how be it? I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake. Whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of the son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto a son will I give 
one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen to put my son, my, my name there. So as you can see here, because of Solomon's sin, for the sake of the Most High's uh, uh, elect David, which was Solomon's father, he said he will not utterly destroy Jerusalem at this time, but split it into two. Ten tribes went under Ephraim, and one tribe stayed, tribe stayed under Judah for David's sake. Judah represents Judea, where Judah, Benjamin, and Levi predominantly stayed. Those are your so-called Negroid tribes who were still in place during the time of Christ in that prophecy of Revelations, the, 20, the, the, the 21st chapter. But before then, in 721, the Indian tribes left out and went into the new world we call America, which the Bible calls Azure. And that's that second address, 13 and 39 on down in the Apocrypha. That's why your Catholic Church and your Protestants agreed not to make those particular scriptures canonical and say they were non-canonical scriptures because it was showing the Indian tribes as the children of Israel. So you got Judah and Israel, which will, which are who? Two witnesses. What are, what, what are, when you look at that word witness, it means report. Their captivity and what they went through reports that they must be the people. I'm going to get into that in one moment. Go to Isaiah 43. Read it. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse uh, 22. Go ahead. And I will make them one nation. I will make them what? And I will make them one nation. I will make them one nation. And the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be to them all. And they shall no more be two nations. They Hold up. They shall no longer be what? And they shall no more be two nations. They shall no longer be two nations. I'm going to go in there later. Ezekiel mm -hmm. 37 all the way down. Mm -hmm. But they, because after the split, it was like they were two separate families, even though they have the same blood in them. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, black people don't think that they have any relations to Indians or have any relations to Puerto Ricans or any relations to the people in South America or to some of our people who've been left back in the old world in different parts who are scattered in Asia. We don't think we have any relations to Philippines and Vietnamese. All the people that the world wars were against, the dark people, they were our people who were scattered throughout the four corners. The world wars are against us. Don't forget that they shall be trodden underfoot 1,203 score days. So the Gentiles are looking to totally cr crush the two witnesses. Go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. Read 1 and 2. Uh, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Go ahead. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Thou art mine. Go down to the 10th verse. Verse 10. Ye are my witnesses. Ye are my what? Ye are my witnesses. Ye are my what? Ye are my witnesses. Ye are my witnesses. Those two kingdoms that were split are the witnesses of the Most High. Now, I'm going to get back to Revelations to break this down. So when he says, I will give power to these two witnesses, I'm going to get into that. And when he says that they shall be killed or lay dead in that city, I'm going to break that down also. Don't forget, John is seeing a revelation. So you have to break down the precepts and relate it to scripture to know exactly what he's talking about. Let's go back to Revelations 11. Uh, Revelations chapter 11, verse 3. Go ahead. And I will give power unto my witnesses. I will give power unto my witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days. You notice that prophecy is the same as the 42 months since the time we were treaded down in, in Revelations 11 and 1 and 2? It's the same period. So this is not talking about two witnesses dying in Jerusalem. It's talking about since the time we fell in 70 A.D., They've been killing us and destroying us. And that's a witness and testimony to the elders who are before the throne. 
They're crying to the Most High, saying, when shall we do vengeance against these Gentiles who are destroying our people? I'm going to prove that too. They are looking to the Father and saying, how long shall it be that you allow these Gentiles to kill your elect? They cry day and night before the throne. They're witnessing what's going on with us. And we are a witness or a report or a testimony before the Father. Read. And it says give power, right? Let's go into that power real quick. What power? You can only receive that power from Christ. I need you to go to Acts 1. Acts 1. I need you to act, Acts 1, 7 and 8. And I need you to get the book of James 5 and 16 through 18. You have that? Mm -hmm. Let's get Acts 1, 7 and 8 first. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his power. That's what he told the disciples during that time. Read. <laughs> but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. Hold up. Read it again. Uh uh, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So don't forget the Holy Spirit just don't settle on one or two get people. Read. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Unto me, read. Both in Jerusalem. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And to the what? And unto the other uttermost parts of the earth. So the witnesses of the true gospel is throughout the four corners of the earth. You must understand this because this is the testimony the angels gave the disciples once Christ was crucified. See that? So that witness is not just confound, confound, confounded or, or just... Uh, uh, um, those witnesses are not just two men like Elijah and Moses. That power is for the, the disciples that operate in the vein of Christ, in the vein of the disciples, like the 144,000, believe it or not, will have this power during this time. And I'm going to prove that. But they're going to they're going to pull it out when they need it. Right now, there's there's no Gentiles bearing down to kill and destroy them. But when that time comes, like when we came out of Egypt, those 144,000 are going to use that power. There will be divine intervention within this earth and the Gentiles will see our God manifest within this earth to protect his people let's go also to James 5 16 through 18 uh, uh, James chapter 5 verse 16 confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man developed much Elijah, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. See that? So now he's given a, a comparison that Elijah, which was one of the witnesses, was like we were. Read. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And he prayed, prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Read. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Read. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Read. Brethren, if any of you do err from the, from the truth, and one converted, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall, have, shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. To show you that if you operate with the Most High, and you save people by teaching them the truth and have them come to the Most High, that covers a multitude of sins. That's a whole nother lesson in itself. <clears throat> but what this is showing right here, brothers and sisters, is that James was actually saying that the power that Elijah had, we have. We have that power. We can execute that power in certain intervals. I remember out there, and, 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 and Elder Lloyd can be a test to it. And we were speaking, and it would be thundering. It would be snowing, whatever the case is. And they would call and say, listen, uh, should we go out to speak? And I'm like, listen, man, get y'all clothes together. The Most High going to work it out. We would do a prayer. The clouds would just move away. The sun would be on us, and we would start prophesying. 
And that was just on a small level. But this power it's talking about is through life or death that's coming. 144,000 will use the Most High's power, use Christ's power that Christ would give us in that day to actually push the Gentiles back from destroying our people. That's what it's talking about for two witnesses. That, that power from on high. It's not just talking about Elijah and Moses. It's, it's because when Christ was crucified, the Holy Spirit came down in which all the disciples could have that power. And those that follow the spirit of the disciples would have that power if needed. And that's why the Gentiles came in in the fourth century and turned Christianity into paganism to stop you all from receiving that power as witnesses. So that you can go back into the pagan ways and not into the power Christ called us into. Let's go back to Revelations. Revelations chapter 11, verse 3. Read. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. I will give power unto my two witnesses. Read. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. What do it mean, clothed in sackcloth? Clothed in sackcloth is a state of mourning. That is the state of God's people every time, every since they fell in 70 AD. Clothed in sackcloth. You put on sackcloth doing a what? A funeral. Okay? They, we, we were mourning the death of our land, the death of our people. So we are those witnesses. We're still looking at the death of our people. We're looking at these Gentiles parading on our holy land as God's people, defecating on, on our land, worshiping Satan on our land. We're still clothed in sackcloth, mourning our earth based on the Gentiles and their technology and the evils they're doing against us and our planet. Read. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees. Let's get something on these olive trees real quick. Let's get Jeremiah eleven sixteen, breaking down the olive trees. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 16. Read. These are the two olive trees. Talking about Judah and Israel. Read. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. He called our name a what? A green olive tree. A green olive tree, read. Fair and of goodly fruit. Fair and of goodly fruit. It's talking about the children of Israel. We're being compared to an olive tree, which is the Most High's chosen tree. So when it says these are the two olive trees, it's talking about Judah and Israel, God's people. Hold that. There's more. Go to Romans 11, 17. Romans chapter 11, verse 17. Read. And if some of the branches be broken off. If some of the branches be broken off. And thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted among them. So the Gentiles, being a wild olive tree, those that believed in Christ, were grafted in amongst the original olive tree. Showing you the olive tree is who? The children of Israel. Read. Were grafted among them. And with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Go ahead. Boast not against the natural branches. Boast not against the natural branches. So he told them, listen, you are being grafted into their history, into their greatness, into their promise. Be not high-minded, but fairy. Boast not against the natural branches. Do what? Boast not against the natural branches. Boast not against the natural branches, read. But if thou boast. Thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Because if you boast, you bear not the root, but the root thee. That means you're coming into their root. What root? Their olive tree. Who's the olive tree? The children of Israel. So when you look in Revelations, you have to use the precepts to break down what it's talking about. So when it says these are the two olive trees, it's talking about Judah and Israel because they were split. Those are two trees in which the Gentiles were grafted into during the time of Christ to provoke the original people back to Christ. Because listen, in Romans 11, it tells you that these people, they would actually come back in the same chapter. Finish reading what you have there. Uh, verse 11. Go ahead. Verse, Romans 11, chapter, 
excuse me, Romans 11, verse 18. Three, boast not against the natural branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Because if you boast, you're not boasting against about your history because you are from Mount Seir. You're boasting about their Moses, their Elijah, their prophets, their Christ, their Messiah. So you're not boasting about your history. You was in the mountains. So be not high-minded and think that these people and their foreparents did all this just for you. That's what Paul is saying here. Read. Verse 19. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off. This is what the Gentiles will say. Here's your boast that Paul warns you against. Read. The branches were broken off. The Israelites were done away with. That I might be grafted in. That I can become a spiritual Israelite. That I can now be God's people in place of his original people. Paul told you not to say that. Read. Verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, Paul said. And thou standest by faith. You people stand by faith alone, not through the bloodline. Read. Be not high-minded, but fair. Don't be high-minded and start boasting. But fair, read. For if the Most High spared not the natural branches. Because if the Most High put his own people in captivity. Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Take heed that he can do the same to you. Read. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of the Most High. On them which fell, severity. Go ahead. But toward thee, goodness. But to you, goodness, read. If thou continue. Hold up, here's a stipulation. If what? Thou continue in his goodness. If you continue in his goodness. But the Gentiles did something. They didn't continue in this. They allowed Constantine to come in and switch Christ's teaching back into paganism. So the Gentiles went against the agreement of Paul. So what's going to happen with them? Read. Otherwise, thou also, also shall be cut off. So the same way the Israelites were cut off, you Gentiles, you are going to be cut off. Yes. Read. Verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief. And if our people, if the original root come back to the truth and, and don't deal with their unbelief, they renounce Catholics, they denounce Islam, they denounce Buddhism, they denounce the gods of the Gentiles and come back to Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya. Read. Shall be grafted in. They're going to be grafted right back in. Read. For the Most High is able to graft them in again. The Most High is able to bring back his people into the fold, into the Isle of Truth. Why they don't teach that in Christianity? Hmm. And they're not coming back as spiritual Israelites either. They're coming back as the children of Israel. Read. Uh, verse 24. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, verse 24. For if thou wert cut off out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to the nature into a good olive tree so if you gentiles were grafted in contrary to nature three how much more shall these how much more shall the most high receive his people back that's what paul was teaching read which be the natural branches go ahead he grafted into their own olive tree how how much more when the most high put his people back into their own olive tree. And that's why it feels so good when Israel all over the earth come to the truth and realize they were the people the whole time. That the Most High had grace and he fulfilled his promise that he would awaken us in the last days. We're fulfilling that time period that is written up in Revelations. We're starting to awaken now. Read. Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Go ahead. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Wise in your own conceits, read. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. Blindness in part have happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until the Gentiles' time have been complete. So blindness in part have happened to Israel. Until the time of the Gentiles, let you know the Most High gave them a certain time of rule. They treaded Jerusalem. But now he's awakening his people to graft them back into the original tree. This is what Paul was fighting for back then. Read. Verse 26. 
And so all Israel shall be saved. Not just the people that was in Judea, all Israel. There will be one nation again. The Beliqua Taino Indians, the Puerto Ricans, the Gad, the Gadites, the people over in Venezuela, the people that are in Africa, the people that are spread in Asia, the people that are spread throughout the four corners who have served all nations. Now they're realiz realizing that they can come back to the covenant. Read. And so all Israel shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. As it is written. As it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. That's Yeshaya, which means deliverer or salvation. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And he shall turn away ungodliness from who? From Jacob. From the children of Israel. Jacob is the father of Israel. That's crystal clear. Now, when we go back to these two witnesses, go back to Revelations. You have to understand the two witnesses that were before Christ that told Christ that he would go through crucifixion when he go to Jerusalem. During the trans uh, tr the transfiguration, it was Christ. It was it was Christ, Moses, and Elijah. Now we went into some of the power of Elijah. Some people talk, say, well, it could be Enoch. Some people bring that out too. You have to realize all the power of our four parents, or what you would call the patriarchs of the past, were given to the disciples. Like the in another example. What spirit did Enoch have? What did the Most High have Enoch for during a time before Noah? He set up Enoch before the flood to judge the angels. Don't you know that Christ will set up the disciples and those that have followed him to judge angels? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, and, I mean, 1 Corinthians 6 and 3 to first, show you that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. And this is not talking about judging good angels. This is talking about judging the fallen angels because they're still fallen. So the same way Elijah, I mean, the same way, excuse me, Enoch judged the fallen angels, Azazel, Simjaza, and all of them before the flood. And these guys are being worshipped by your elites today. All the angels that fell after that, the disciples will judge. The 144,000 will judge. 1 Corinthians 6 and 3, read it. Know ye not. That we shall judge angels? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Read. How much more things that, pert that, that pertain to this life? So what did the, the disciples know that we didn't? They're not teaching you in church that we're going to judge angels. Why? They're not telling you about the angels that came and fell before the flood. They're not telling you about the judgment of Enoch against those angels that fell. So Christians don't even know what this is talking about. So he will give the disciples power when Christ returns to judge those fallen angels who continue to fall under Satan's power. So when it talks about those witnesses, it's talking about those that are in the earth today, sealed as 144,000. These men from each tribe of the children of Israel. That's what it's speaking of. Let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 11, verse 4. Go ahead. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the most high of the earth. Go ahead. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in the same manner be killed. To show you the power that the 144,000 will have when it comes time for the wilderness. When the nations try to come against the children of Israel, there will be power. The same as when we came out of Egypt. Much power, much miracles were, were happening in the midst of our people. It's going to happen again. Read. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They will have the same power Elijah had going into the book of James, the same power. Read. And have, have powers, power over waters to turn them to blood. Same thing as Moses did. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. They're going to have the same power, those that are within Christ. Read. Verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony. When they shall have finished their testimony. Read. The beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. Shall make war against them. Now look at this war against them. Read. And shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the, of the great city. 
which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now, what city is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt? Sodom was known for what? Homosexuality. That's why it says spiritually. Now, I'm going to give you a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you real quick what it's talking about. Spiritually called Sodom. So this is not Sodom. And it is not Egypt because it's spiritual Egypt. So Sodom was a place that was known for spiritual fornication, homosexuality at a high level. So it will be known for homosexuality. It will also be known for what? Egypt is a place where God's people serve captivity. It will be known as the, as the, uh, the center of slavery for the children of Israel. Spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And it says where our Lord was what? Where our Lord was crucified. And some people would immediately say, well, this is talking about their dead bodies being in Jerusalem. No. It's talking about, I, because Christ was crucified in Jerusalem. It's talking about those with the spirit of Christ. Those that are from the lineage of Judah being crucified. And I'm going to prove that. How do we know this? Hold that and go to Galatians 3 and 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Where our Lord was crucified. In that same place is spiritually Sodom in Egypt. Homosexuality and the captivity of God's people. Israel is not known for these things on a high level. They're not known for, for Egypt as enslaving our people in Jerusalem. When did this happen? It's not talking about Jerusalem. It's talking about America. Let me prove that. Galatians 3 and 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Being made a curse for us. For it is written. For it is written. Cursed is every man or every one that hangeth on a tree. That what? That hangeth on a tree. When we were enslaved in the place called spiritually Sodom in Egypt, what did they do to Judah? They hanged him on a tree. That was representing the crucifixion of Christ in the land Sodom and Egypt. They were hanging us on trees. They were hanging us and crucifying us. The same as they did in ancient Jerusalem. Read. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Being made a curse for us. For it is written. It is written. Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That hangeth on a tree. So they were crucifying Christ over and over again in that land spiritually Sodom in Egypt. They were hanging us on trees. And you have to realize these were Masonic deities under the Albert Pike doctrine that knew that they would be crucifying Christ over and over again by hanging us under the KKK, hanging us in America. That's what's part of, that was part of their rituals. And the place that's known for homosexuality, giving homosexuals rights, giving them power over the family, like Sodom, that's talking about America, brothers and sisters. And that's where our dead bodies were. How are we dead? We're not physically dead. We're spiritually dead. We're spiritually dead. We have no idea who we are. We are in the body of the dry bones in America. Link it to Ezekiel 37. Go back to Revelations. Uh, Revelations chapter 11, verse uh, six. Go ahead. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And we, have, we already went through that. Read. And have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to. Excuse me. Um, we're down at verse. Uh, verse nine. Excuse me. And they and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see the their dead bodies. Now listen to this. Shall see their dead bodies. What? Three days. Three days. And in half. And a half. Now don't forget that three days and a half breaks down to that 42 months we just read up in the second verse. When you multiply 30 into 1,260, it gives you three days and a half. So all the nations will see us what? Shall see their dead bodies of uh, three days. And in half. Three days and a half. 
and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now you notice these people are walking around. They're not in graves, but they're spiritually what? Dead. All the nations know who they are, but they don't know who they are. That's why they're not in graves. They're spiritually dead. And all the nations are looking at them, knowing they're the children of Israel and not telling them. That's why all the nations and kindreds and tongues are looking at these people walk around like dead people because they don't have no understanding of their national origin. They don't know that they are the people of the promise. Read. And they dwelt upon the earth, and they that dwelt upon the earth shall rejoice over them. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. Listen to this clearly. And make merry. And shall send gifts one to another. They shall send gifts to one another because since God's people are in captivity, all the nations are being rich and, 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 and actually celebrating over the earth that God's people are serving them. So now all the other nations are feeling good right now, sending gifts to each other, paying each other, having merchandise in the earth because God's people don't realize that they are the, they are the spoon that stirred this pot. They are the people that all the nations are actually getting rich off of. Because they're dead. They don't realize that they're the people. Read. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. It says what? After three days and a half, what happens? The spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. After that period of time from which we fell, the Most High Spirit started coming back into these people. Read. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. That's what they are afraid of. Once we come together and understand who we are, we become an army, a spiritual army, against the new world order itself. This is what the nations fear. Read. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the mm. same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. This is talking about when Christ returns, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that are with him sh shall meet him in the air. All the nations are going to see us get our power within this realm. This is what all nations fear. They have spent so much money and time and, 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 and schooling to keep us in darkness. They're, they're all working in the dark to keep these people from actually opening their eyes. But the Most High have awakened the two witnesses. How do we know it's talking about the children of Israel as a whole and not just two people? Hold that. Get Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. Read. Of the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. They were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Then he says, Can these bones live? That means, will these people live again? Now, if he say, Can these bones live? That means they're what? They're dead. Read. And I answered, O Lord Power. Thou knowest. He say only you know because what Ezekiel was shown the future of our people. He's seen the mess we were in. He's seen all nations rejoicing over our destruction. He's seen us. He's seen the CIA and all these other government officials put crack on us, drugs on us, demoralize us. He's seen us totally rejected. These people weren't even serving the Most High. Didn't even know the Most High anymore. Didn't even know his name. And Ezekiel said, you know what? <laughs> Only you know if these people want to live. Look at them. That's a dead people. Read. Verse 4. And he said unto me, prophesy upon these he bones. He says what? Prophesy upon these bones. There go your two prophets right there. Go out there and speak to my people. Not just Judah. Israel too. Not just Judah, but Israel too. And what it says in the scriptures in Revelations, when it says these are the two candlesticks that stand up before the throne, the old temple of the Old Testament was built 
in facsimile of the spiritual temple, and which you had two cherubs over the children of Israel. Those were the two candlesticks that's before the Father, that's looking down on the children of Israel. Then you have the elders praying to the Most High, saying, how long will you allow these Gentiles to destroy my people? Look at our, our people are dejected already, and they're still killing them. They're still destroying them. They're still coming up with new ways to kill your people. When will you send your son to take these Gentiles down? Read. And he, and he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. He says, prophesy upon these bones. You go speak to these bones. Now, we know these people are not physically dead because how can you prophesy to someone that's spiritually, that's physically dead? So in Revelations, it's not talking about somebody, prophets, preaching in Jerusalem and getting killed and being there for three and a half days. This is talking about us prophesying to our people, telling them, listen, you are not African. You are not Ham. You're not an African-American. You're not a Puerto Rican. You're not a Mexican. You're not a Filipino. You're not a, these are names the Gentiles put on you. You are the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the children of Abraham. You're the children of Isaac. You're the children of Jacob. You are the heir to the throne. It's through Christ's blood you will come back and stand again as God's people, an army against the world armies. You and this, this is what this is talking about. Prophesy to them and wake them up. Yes, you can t tell the Gentiles what they will receive if they walk in promise. Yes, all great. But you must get the Jews first, then the Gentiles. You must wake up the teachers to be a light and teach the Gentiles because the Gentiles don't know any better. They've been lied to also. Read. And say unto them. And say unto them. O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what we will use, the Bible. The word, read. Thus saith the Most High Power, unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter unto you. I will cause breath to enter, that's the Holy Spirit. And ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you up with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Most High. That who's the Most High? That I am the Most High. That I am, which is Ahia, is the Most High. That seal in your forehead? Read. So I prophesied as I was commanded. So we went out and prophesied at the, as the Most High told us to. It wasn't through the will of man that we just one day just went out and started telling the people what was going on. This was commanded by the Most High. Read. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to, to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. Go ahead. And the skin covered, covered them above, but there was no breath in them. But there was no breath in them. Now they're starting to wake up and realize who they are, but they still need that breath. Read. Then said he unto me, Prophesying to the wind. You go prophesying to the wind. That means you go out there and you speak. It doesn't matter who's listening. It been times, I'm going to tell you right now, we went to a speaking and there was no one there at all. And I looked at him and said, man, it's going to be crazy. And everybody looking at me is like, what, what's going on? I'm like, brother, it's going to be crazy today. There was nobody out there. Next thing you know, we're pressed by hundreds of people, fifties of people out there. Ah, and our people, you see our people in the side just waking up all over the place. Just prophesy unto the wind. The Most High know who will link into his word. He will do it. He'll bring the people. You just go out there and talk. You go out there and bring this word, and I will bring my people. I will awaken my people. You go speak to the wind. That's your job. Read. So I prophesied as, I, as he commanded. So those that are the witnesses of the Most High went out and prophesied as the Most High commanded. And the breath came into them. And the people started receiving the Holy Spirit. Breath is a feminine, which means rawak. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the breath that came into Adam and made him a living soul. Read. And stood up upon their feet. And, he, and he, he says once the breath was in them, they started standing on their feet. Read. An exceeding great army. Then, then this is what they fear. They fear 
that these people that would wake up would realize that they are the army of the Most High. Now, you know, be, you're not initiated into an army not to fight. And this is what these other nations know. They know that these people wake up and realize, you know what, these, the nations who have taught us are actually our enemies. We must get ourselves spiritually together to fight this war because the Illuminati and all of them, they're not physically fighting. They're using their mind and their spiritual power under Satan to fight against us. And they realize the elect, those with the seal in their head, would come together and put their minds together to fight against the works of evil. Read. Uh, verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man. Son of man. These bones are the whole house of Israel. They are what? These bones are the whole house of Israel. These dead people are the whole house of Israel. That's your dead prophets in the street three and a half days. 1,203 score days. Read. Behold, they say, our bones are dry. Yes, they say our bones are dry. Read. And our hope is lost. And you think that there's no hope. That's why some people say, man, I don't think we can make it through this. Brothers and sisters, you are on the winning side. You were born on the winning side. You just have to now receive it and take full advantage of the power Christ has placed in this earth for you. You have won already. You just have to choose the side of righteousness. Read. We are cut off for our part. And then when we get the truth, we say, man, we were cut off because of what we did. We were cut off because our foreparents sinned. Read. Therefore prophesy and say unto them. But he says, therefore prophesy and say to these people, the children of Israel. Thus saith the most high power. Thus saith your God is the God of Israel, Ahia. Behold, O oh my people. O oh my people. I will come upon your graves. I will come upon your graves. And cause you to come up out of your graves. And cause you to come up out of your graves. That's your three and a half days dead in the street. After you've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, read. And bring you into the land of Israel. And he will bring us back into the land of Israel. When Christ returns, he will bring us back. And we're going back to home. We're going back home. That's the Bible. We're going to go back home, brothers and sisters. And it's not going to be the UN sending us in boats as some prop Jewish propaganda. It's going to be the Most High sending his son when he said it's time to take these Gentiles down. Because Israel, as we know it today, will be totally annihilated by nuclear fire. It's going to be cleansed through fire. And when we go into the land, she will bring forth her fruit again. Read. Uh, verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you. He shall put it. Now we will no longer be subject to sin. He will put his spirit in us. Read. And ye shall live. And we shall live. Read. And, and I shall place you in your own land. And at that time, we will be in our own land. And of course, we're going to put the Gentiles in their respective places after they clean up. Read. Then shall ye know that I, the Most High, have spoken it and have performed it, saith the Lord. And he will be the only God mentioned forever. All the gods of the nations will fall. Read. Verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and now, write upon it. Take ye one stick and write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his Judah companions. Judah and Israel, his companions. That's the Indian tribes, which are the northern kingdom under the Belikwa Taino Indians, Ephraim. And the southern kingdom under Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Read. Then take another stick. Take another stick. And write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. See that? And for all the house of Israel, his companions. So you got Judah and his companions, which were split. And you got Ephraim, which was split. Those are the two prophets. The children of Israel. 12,000 from each tribe. Read. Verse 17. And join them one to another. Unto, unto bring one them stick. together under one stick. Go ahead. And they shall become one in thine hand. And they shall become one in Christ's hand. And when the children of thy, thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us 
what thou meanest by these. And when people ask, what do you mean by these? Read. Say unto them, thus saith the Most High Power, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim. Go ahead. And the tribe of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him. Go ahead. Even the stick of Judah. Even the stick of Judah. That means we're going to be one again. Right now, we're separated. But what's going on in the earth is going to force all the tribes to come together. The, the new world order are against the 12 tribes. That's what it's all about. The Gentiles know that their power is being broken and the Most High is raising us up. So now they must bring forth a eugenics program to kill us before we receive power. Read. And make them one stick. Make them one stick. Go ahead. And they shall be one in my hand. And it says they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before thy, their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Most High Power, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. From among the what? From among the heathen. The heathen is the Gentile who have scattered us like Christ said they would scatter us. Read. Whether they be gone. Any place they have gone through the four corners of the earth. Read. And will gather, gather them on every side. And I will gather them on every side. Read. And bring them into their own land. And I will bring them to their own land. So the captives and those that are without, don't worry. You're going to have what you, what you need. You just got to renounce the mark of the beast and renounce this system. You can't depend on this system. Christ is going to deliver us into a righteous system in which we don't have to beg like dogs before the beast. He will take care of us. Of course, we're going to go through a tough time, but we will be delivered through this time if we make it to the 1,335th day written of in Daniel, the 12th chapter. We have to get past the 1,290 days. When they institute the mark of the beast, which is the daily sacrifice that's taken away in Daniel's 12, we're going to have that amount of time, a little over three and a half years, to get into a safe haven. And we're going to have cattle, food, everything the Most High is going to need. We're going to have our families there, everything. It's, going, it's all going to be settled. We're going to be okay. And during that period, there will be a purging and power will be given to those in that specific area, in that land, that's serving the Most High. Read. And the sticks where, where on thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. Go ahead. And say unto them, Thus saith the Most High Power, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. From among the heathen. Whether they be gone. No, doesn't matter where they are, read. And will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Bring them to their own land. No longer will we call ourselves Puerto Ricans, call ourselves Indians, calling ourselves African Americans. No longer will we call ourselves after the Gentiles. Read. And I will make them one nation. I will make them one nation. And the land upon the mountain of Israel. Go ahead. And one king shall be king to them all. And we know that king is Yeshua, Christ. Read. And they shall no more be two nations. No longer will we be split like we were under Solomon. Go ahead. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they be divided into kingdoms, into kingdoms or separate kingdoms like we were in the past. Read. Neither shall they defile themselves of, uh, any more with their idols. And no longer will we worship in these idols that the Catholics gave us, that the Buddhists gave us, that the Hindus gave us, or, or the rock in Mecca. No longer will we follow these Gentile gods. By following their gods, their gods have placed them over us. It's a spiritual destruction on God's people to worship any god but the god of the Hebrews. Read. Nor with their detestable things. Nor with their detestable things, read. Nor with their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned. And he will save us out of all of our dwelling places, the same places we have sinned. Now, of course, some people say, well, America is our dwelling place. Yes, it is. But you have to realize that America will be utterly destroyed before this time. According to the Bible, no man or beast will be in that particular area. When some of the hell breaks loose and the New World Order is broke loose, they, of course, 
people are going to see it and say, you know what? What the brothers what the brothers was teaching is correct. And the most high is going to give them time to get up out of there too, hopefully. But when it says he will he will gather us throughout the four corners, you have to look in Isaiah the eleventh chapter and it give us the exact places where all of our people will be saved out of during the time of Christ. America is not one of them. A lot of our people are going to make it out of there based on circumstance. You're not going to be able to survive. Either, either, either you follow the mark of the beast and go into one of these camps they're going to put you in to destroy you, or you're going to, those who can see are going to say, listen, I'm not going there. I'm getting out of here. Any place is better than, and you know what? We're going to be begging for, for, for these camps. That's going to be the only place to get food. So a lot of us are going to say, you know what? Let me make my way over the border. Let me try to get over that way. Let me find other resources. And the angels are going to guide a lot of our people who are there. Read. Uh, verse 20, 24. Go ahead. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. When it says, David, my servant, shall be king over them, it's talking about the throne of David or David's position. That's Christ. That's Christ in David's position. Read. And they shall have one shepherd. And they shall have one shepherd. That shepherd is your child. Read. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. They shall do what? They observe shall, my what? Uh, observe my statutes and do them. We're going to actually follow the commandments of God. So why is the Christian saying that the laws are done away with? When it's telling you when we're delivered back into the land, we're going to be following the laws again. So in order to, re to rehearse the righteous acts, we must now begin to do these things now. According to the Bible. Read. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they, and their children, and their children's children forever. And for how long? Forever. No longer will the Gentiles rule in the land. And that's when the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled and they are wiped out of Jerusalem or Israel. According to the Bible. Okay. One other thing I wanted to break out, uh, and then after that, we can pray out and answer questions.